Hello, my room's so hot, I pulled an AC out of the basement, plugged it in, and now my eyes are itchy. I'm sure that's fine. All right, all right. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to make an intro cutscene for your game. Like, you boot up the game, and it, I don't know, it shows a cool little animation, and then there's a play button. So let's get into that. So first, I want it to fade in from black. So we're going to need to make the screen black. So inside of Star GUI, just add a screen GUI. We're going to name that Cutscene UI. And inside of that, we're going to add a frame. We're going to set the frames anchor. Oops. Yeah, we're going to set the frames anchor point to 0 0.5 by 0 0.5. And we're going to set the position to 0 0.5 by 0 0.5. We're going to change the size from 100 by 100 to 2000 by 2000. We're going to set the background color three to black. I don't know why I keep saying black like that, but uh, then we're going to name it black frame. And we're going to click, you see where it says visible. We're just going to tick that off. And now we have the black frame. So now we need to make a button. I'm just going to add a text button. I'm going to set the uh, anchor point to 0 0.5 by 0 0.5. And I'm going to set the background transparency to 1. I actually just want the text. Now I'm going to set the text color 3 to white. And I'm going to enable text scale. So now we have just text. You can set it to play. And if you want, you can customize the font. Okay, I kind of like this font. I'm not going to lie. So let's scale the button up. Let's put it in the middle of the screen. So you can just drag. There should be like a little, you can see a little green line. But if you don't have the green line somehow, you can just go to position and make sure the first one's 0 0.5. The second one is just for up and down. But 0 0.5 on the left, that'll make sure it's in the middle. So now we have our button. Let's just name it. Actually, let's keep it text button. And we can just turn off the visibility. So it's no longer visible. Now let's put something cool in the workspace. Like, oh, I have something cool in mind. Yep, this is definitely cool enough. Let's make a few cameras. So let's add a part to workspace. And on that part, we're going to name it Cam1. Right click it and turn on Show Orientation Indicator. So you'll be able to see which direction it's facing. I don't know why my part just unnamed, but there we go. Click on the part and uh, do group as folder, and we'll just name that folder cameras. So let's make our first cam, which is going to be facing the ground. And our second cam, which is going to be facing the face. We'll just name cam2 to actually be cam2. Then we'll highlight both of those. We'll turn off can collide. And we'll set, the, well, oh yeah, anchor them. And we'll set the transparency to 1. Now comes the fun part. Inside of the cutscene UI, just add a local script. Name it cutscene handler. Alright, let's add a few verbs. Let's do local tween service equals game get service tween service. So we're going to need the uh, smoothly animate things. Let's also get the cam folder. So we'll do local cam folder equals game.workspace.cameras. Now we need to add the actual camera, like the player's camera. So we'll do local camera equals game dot current camera. And that's how we get the player's uh, like point of view camera. And the last two things are black frame and button. So we'll do local black frame equals script dot parent of black frame. And we'll do local button equals script dot parent dot text button. Also, I lied. We need to add a tween info. So let's make a quick team uh, tween info so the camera like pops up instead of just being an ugly animation. So we'll do local ti for tween info equals tween info dot new and we'll give ourselves some space to work. The first, well I actually I explained tween info last tutorial so I won't really dive into it too much. So we'll just do three seconds, that's how long we want it to take. We want the enum, I mean we want the easing style to be cubic. So we'll do enum dot easing style dot cubic. And then we want the easing direction to be out. So we'll do enum, enum dot easing direction dot out. Don't forget to add little uh, commas, otherwise it's going to give you an error. Uh, we want no repeats, so put zero. False for uh, reverses, we don't want those. And we don't want any delay, so we'll put zero. Now we have our tween info. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the camera to be scriptable. So we'll do camera dot camera uh, type equals enum dot camera type dot scriptable. You have to do that before editing the camera, otherwise it will immediately snap back to uh, the player's head the second the animation completes. Let's enable the black frame, so we'll do black frame that visible equals true. And let's set the camera's C frame to be the one on the floor. So we'll do camera 
that C frame equals cam folder dot cam one. That C frame. I forgot. Almost forgot the C frame. I want it to wait like five seconds before the animation plays. So we'll do task dot wait five. And now let's create a few tweens. So we'll do tween service create black frame tween info and our curly brackets. We'll do black frame. Oh no, not black frame. We'll do background trans. Parent, God, transparency equals one. Then we'll do pull and play. We can copy this, paste it underneath. And instead of this one, we can do camera. Clean info, we'll keep that the same. And instead of changing the background transparency to one, we'll do C frame equals cam folder at cam two dot C frame. Now all we have to do is make the button appear. So I want the button to take like a second longer to appear than everything else. So I'll do test that wait one. And above that, I'm gonna do button dot visible equals true. Now we just need to make text transparency zero. So it appears, so we'll do teams. Oh, actually, let's make sure it's already on zero. So click your text button and scroll down and make sure text transparency is set to uh, one, I mean, not zero. So if it's like this, put it to this. Setting it to one will make it invisible. Now I did this off screen, but if you go into your button, uh, make sure text stroke transparency is zero. All right, above the test, I'll wait one. Let's do button dot visible equals true. And underneath that, after our one second wait, we're going to do teen service create button clean info, our curly brackets, and we'll do text transparency equals zero. So we'll do play. So if we press play and we test it, we should get a pretty smooth fade. doesn't look half bad let's just make it so the button works now so we'll just do button dot mouse button one click connect function and we'll do button dot visible equals false and we'll do camera dot camera type equals enum dot camera type dot custom and it's that easy so if we go into the game we'll get our little like cutscene and when we press play we can play the game So yeah, it's a pretty simple tutorial on how to do an intro cutscene. There's a lot you can do with it. So like if you wanted to add another camera, like you could duplicate uh, cam 2. We'll just move it over to the right. And we'll just name it cam 3. So if you wanted to have it zoom around me for some reason, you could do that. So right here you see how it says it's a camera 2. Instead of making the button visible there, we can just do test out wait three we can paste that code again instead of camera two we'll set it to camera three and we can add like another pass out wait we'll do two seconds and then the button will appear so we have like this janky cutscene so when the camera pans up it will for some reason go to the right and then i don't know it will say play this is really janky but you can customize it to your liking, make your own cutscene. I highly doubt you're gonna have just a model of me and the camera's gonna be circling that. Because I unless I'm wrong, there might be somebody out there who'll do it. But yeah, we press play, we're in. So it's as easy as that. Hope my tutorial was useful. Uh have a good day.